Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Lisa. Thanks for joining me here on the Whimsy Stamped channel for another card making tutorial. Today I'm sharing a fun technique using background stamps. As you may know, Whimsy has a big selection of rubber cling background stamps in their online shop. Now I've found myself using them a lot lately to add more detail to my cards. And I thought I would share with you how and why I started using this fun technique. So feel free to grab your background stamps and join in the fun. Let's talk about how and why. Like most ideas, this one was born of necessity. As I was working on this card, I noticed that it needed more. It was so plain, the image was lost in all that empty space. So I thought to myself, what's the worst thing that can happen if I take a background stamp and just stamp around it? The worst thing is it would end up in file 13 and I'm okay with that. The next question I asked myself was how I would go about doing this. It's simple. I can stamp smaller areas if I roll the rubber stamp up to prevent accidental mistakes. Let's take a look at this technique in action. We're going to start with the Roarsum Skin background stamp. Now for this demonstration, I have a dark eggplant paper and a gold ink that I'll be using. So the first thing that I do is decide which area of the stamp I'm going to be using. Now, once I have that decided, I just take the stamp, roll it up the edges of my finger, and then add ink and stamp it. Rubber is flexible, so your stamps won't be damaged. Now, I've used this technique for months now, and with that said, I don't recommend that you roll these up for an extended period of time. As soon as I'm done stamping, I go ahead and lay mine flat, and go ahead and clean the stamp off and get it back to its original state. Now, you could use the same technique with clear stamps as well because they're pliable as well. Break out those background stamps, whether they're the clean rubber stamps or clear stamps, and try this technique. It is a lot of fun. This is a great technique to add details and texture to die cut pieces. So I have here in front of me a three-in-one mitered frame. I'm adding anti-static powder to this so that I can do some heat embossing. And I grab my stamp, I roll it up along my finger, and I'm picking up that charming pink ink. And then once I get ready to switch over to the green ink, I simply rotate the stamp to a clean area, pick up the green ink, and stamp it. I'm going to do the same with the yellow. Once I have my stamping done, we'll add clear embossing powder to our frame after laying that stamp flat out, and then we'll heat set this with our heat gun. Now, it's one of the things that I like about this technique is if you do want to use different colors of ink, you don't have to stop and clean the stamp in between each uh, stamping. You can just rotate the stamp and move on to the next color. So here we're going to take our heat gun. It's preheated and we're going to heat set that powder. So of course we let that frame cool off before we started coming in with the black ink. Now I'm using Whimsy Stamps Blender Brush to add the black ink. And once I have it covered, I'm going to come in with my rag and remove any excess ink off the top of the embossed area so those bright colors shine through. And here you can see where we've used it on colored cardstock. And now we've used it on a die cut piece to add some texture and detail to that die cut piece. I do want to show you one more way to use it on ink blended backgrounds, but I want to show you with a different background stamp. So I'm starting out with my fossilized amber, spiced marmalade, and aged mahogany distress oxides using my Whimsy Stamps Blender brushes and just going to blend these colors together on a white card panel. And then I'm going to come in with Versifying Claire Pinecone ink. I really like using the Versifying Claire inks for this. In case I decide I want to heat emboss, I can go ahead and do that. Now, if you're using Distress Oxides, make sure if you're going to heat emboss, you let that ink dry completely before you come in and do this technique over it to heat emboss it. Here I have the Chippy Paint background stamp and it's got this grungy farmhouse vibe about it. I love it. It's going to be perfect for Halloween and Christmas cards. And I'm just coming in picking up that pine cone ink and laying it down over those gorgeous fall colors. Um, so here you can see this is just another great way to use this really simple technique. I hope you guys will give this technique a try. I have lots of samples that I want to share with you now. So I hope you stick around for those. My first sample here, I use the Roarsome 
skin background stamp along with a few other products. Now you're going to find all of these products listed below and if you want to know which product I used on each card you can head over to my blog to check that out there. So my next card I did some hot foil stamping and hot foiling using my mink machine and I absolutely love this shaker card. I use the speckles background stamp on this card just to add some black specks to the frame and help pull some black into this card so I could use black ink for my sentiment. Now this card, I use the chippy paint background stamp on my card base and on my frame. My next card sample, I use the chippy paint background stamp with the filled with pride stamp from Whimsy. Did some easy watercoloring and I used my airbrush if you want to know more about that technique, leave a comment below and I will be sure to get a video put together for it. Now my last sample, I actually am sharing this tutorial over on my channel today. If you want to join me over there, I'll have it linked in the description box below along with all the products that I used and a link to a blog post over on my website. I really do appreciate you joining me. I hope you enjoyed your time with me today and until next time, please take care.